For those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Daniel. I, I, uh, I'm a, I lead special projects at F2Pool, a uh, Bitcoin mining, a POW mining pool. Um, and we basically s help start a, a working group called the Blockchain Infrastructure Carbon Offset Working Group um, that we've been actually forming and meeting for about almost a year, <laughs> maybe. I, 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 oh, sure. Oh, it's a clicker. Thank you. Um, and then, right, there's these ESG uh, criteria goals and criticisms that the cryptocurrency industry has been, been getting since the, the beginning of time. And instead of burying our heads under the sand and trying to ignore it and say everything is okay, we thought it would be very important for us to uh, at least address it and at the very least do something um, about it. So we've created, uh, we've created some designs uh, and there's a lot of, as, as we have all found in uh, crypto, Lego blocks that we can just kind of piece together very easily and then create a potential solution um, to incentivize good behavior and not have to rely on people's altruism to satisfy these types of ESG criteria goals um, and to kind of silence the haters, right? <laughs> silence the critics. Because, right, oftentimes we, we see, right, someone will say, oh, Bitcoin, I hate it because of the environment. You're destroying the environment and will not engage with you any any longer. So, um, yeah, I I think there's part of the bottom is cut off. Uh, maybe. Yeah, the state of crypto within. Yeah. <laughs> there's gonna be stuff on the bottom that's. Yeah, we can start from the first slide. Yeah, just share that. This is this is what we need. Yeah, exactly, with the nice pictures. So yeah, this is uh, I'll, I'll I'll be basically talking about the general um, system uh, and some of the the motivations, and then we'll be going on uh, the different Lego pieces. So yeah, climate solutions in crypto. I F two pool, and I also work at Stakefish, and then we've been helping with the blockchain infrastructure carbon offset working group. Have the clicker. Yeah, so this is a, a nice quote, right? It says, only when the last tree has died, the last river has been poisoned, and the last fish has been caught, will we realize we cannot eat money. Bitcoin is great. Um, it's providing a lot of value to the world, but we can't <laughs> destroy the planet while we're at it. And I think a lot of you guys have seen this uh, cartoon, right? <laughs> yes, the planet got destroyed, but for a beautiful moment in time, we created a lot of value for our share shareholders. There's definitely responsibility that we need to take. Um, so that's where a lot of this kind of got started. Uh, we have to own the problem and engage with solutions. Um, I, I don't think it's wise to bury our heads under the sand and ignore the criticisms that people have, even though some are definitely unfounded. There definitely is a lot of in education that needs to be done for uh, people to understand that it's, uh, it's a lot more nuanced. As an example, right, some may even argue that some coal-powered mining, mining farms are actually m somewhat more uh, ESG compliant in terms of efficiency and load balancing and, and what kind of value that they bring to the, the, the local infrastructure grid. But yeah, we, we, we have to be proactive, right? And as F2 Pool being the world's largest Bitcoin mining pool, I think it the responsibility needs to, to uh, we can at least start some of these conversations and engage with a lot of industry leaders, um, many of whom are here today and will be presenting, and start, start on that goal. As, as many people have also heard, right, Elon Musk had his famous, like, I'm not going to sell you a Tesla unless Bitcoin goes to, like, 50%, and I'm not going to accept Bitcoin, right? 50% uh, renewables. Um, but that, I think, is also an ideal where, you know, Every single Bitcoin miner in the world switching to renewable energy is, is a nice thing to say, but it's, it's, un, it's, it's idealistic. And so we can offset the rest of what we can't do in, in initially. So, yeah, I'll be talking about uh, these, these five issues, right? it's the state, um, some carbon emission measurements that we've done and what we have done, the whole point of having good behavior be incentivized instead of relying on altruism which is very in line with kind of like the Bitcoin ethos and 
the, a brief overview of a, di a system diagram that we've created with incentivized carbon offset systems. Um, and and Klimadao is here as well and will be presenting. So, yeah, so basically, uh, we, we mostly know this, right? There's a lot of switches from POW to POS. There's definitely a lot of uh, carbon emissions that are being emitted because of this, this, uh, this the point of, of mining where we need to rely on energy and that being a costly thing. But as we've definitely seen nowadays, right, crypto is 100% becoming a much more adopted option for the future of finance that, that we all, many of us early, early people have believed in for a while now and we're seeing that type of adoption. So um, we have to address it uh, head on. Yeah, and, and these are some of the, um, uh, some headlines, right? Not just in crypto, but in just the traditional, traditional markets, right? There's, a, there's this green revolution of, of, of people, right? Um, we've, we've done some green NFTs, right? Jack Dorsey is, is doing stuff with, right, funding green mining, um, et cetera. And, and Shamath is always bullish on climate tech. So carbon emissions. So, um, right, it, it, for us to be able to offset and address some of these issues, right, we, we have to also be able to measure ourselves. Regen Network, a, uh, a POS blockchain that is doing a lot of this fundamental research and development into um, these energy solutions has created fantastic uh, trackers for us. And so I can, I can quickly go through these, but um, we've done um, assessments on mining pools, miners, and then validators. So as an example, right, we have, this is some of the methodology that they have. Um, we can share these slides also later. And then we have like these simple calculators that kind of break down the hash rate, the energy efficiency, consumption, and then also the types of software and the, the miners and cells, like the ASICs that, that, that are being used. So this is a sample calculation that um, Regen has provided for us. Um, yep, and this is the methodology for the type of servers that we also have. We also have the same thing for validators. This is also for um, those calculations for proof of stake. And then, right, we need to be able to kind of address and go down the line of all these different mining pools on the POSW side of how they're going to address their type of hash rate and then the, the emissions that they're, pr that they're bringing. So um, we can talk about also what we've done because we definitely have not been complacent or a ignorant of what what uh, we can do. So, right, F2 pool, we celebrated our eighth anniversary in May. We partnered with like Super Rare's top performing NFT artist who also happens to be Korean. Um, and we purchased carbon credits um, with, with the, the donation. So we raised about uh, $800,000 and then we got Regen to support us purchasing carbon credits. Um, as well as Creole, who's another member of our uh, blockchain infrastructure carbon offset working group. That's fantastic. There's also the green NFTs. Fanny's here who was helping with Jason Bailey. Um, and we did some hackathons. We had some fantastic uh, uh, participants who were able to do this green tracking. And right, we had Fungi Proof, who is also we invited to the working group because they do some fantastic dashboard stuff and I'm very familiar with their team as well from the Zero X ecosystem. Um, but yeah, and, and so it's definitely, there's stuff that's, there's been, that has been done and if people ask you about like, oh, why is crypto just destroying the planet? The, we are obviously doing, you can point them to these initiatives and as well as this one right now with the infrastructure working group. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, good behavior, it should say, good behavior must be incentivized. Maybe if God came down and <laughs> he told us all what to do, that would be easier too, but um, yeah, like th there's this concept of uh, behavior um, and, and I, I, I think we can use the Bitcoin example and I talked about this on the panel earlier today, but like Bitcoin miners uh, are mostly they don't give a shit about the environment. And, and they also, they don't give a shit about um, decentralization, self-sovereignty, self and censorship resistance. Their primary motive is they, they mine, they obey the system 
and they make money. And then the side effects of that is what we all enjoy with decentralization, self-sovereignty, and censorship resistance because of that. Maybe, that. maybe in the early days, Bitcoin miners did care about the, this new global financial future. Like, I was one of the radicals um, who started Bitcoin mining because of that. But right now that we have a lot of institutional miners, there's like an end, end goal, there's, there's money that needs to be made. And so the Bitcoin network is very robust um, and it operates as it should be, right? Everyone is incentivized and we all get what we want. The people who use the Bitcoin network get that type of self-sovereignty and decentralization um, and the Bitcoin miners get what they want. And so we can kind of use that same ethos, right? Where good behavior is um, incentivized uh, and switch it to the carbon narrative, right? The ESG narrative where carbon, if, if green mining or even also carbon offsetting is framed as good behavior, we have to incentivize it. We can't, we can't rely on altruism there. And as an example, right, I, I was actually talking with, uh, I reached out to Gregory in December and I was like, hey, I want to purchase carbon credits um, for F2 pool. And we were like, where's the money? Are we just going to pull money from our pocket and pay for them? And it was like, oh, it, it, it's not going to fly. And then eventually it start, spawned off the, the carbon offset working group. And so, right, and, and then I, I, I briefly mentioned these types of solutions, right? The problem is POW mining produces carbon emissions, and the solutions are switch everything to renewable. That's, that's idealistic. Carbon offset everything, but that can't rely on altruism. So we, we started talking a lot uh, and pulling in people who are in the industry to get this type of um, incentivization built in because it clearly works for the Bitcoin system. Maybe it can work for, for this. So good behavior has to be incentivized. Good behavior cannot rely on altruism. And, and this is a bit of right, why do miners mine? Do they mine for money or do they, do they mine for decentralization, self-sovereignty and censorship resistance? Maybe both, right? Maybe you can be both rich and right, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's the ethos. This is actually a picture of a mining farm in Russia. Um, it's a lot of energy, right? And so the Bitcoin Infrastructure Carbon Offset Working Group, it's a, it's a mouthful, but that was the best that we, <laughs> we had to come up with. And these are a lot of the participants. Um, Stakefish, Save Validator, Regen, Gitcoin, Seasons, an NFT fractionalization platform, blockchain for Climate Foundation for Joseph Plant, who unfortunately couldn't be here, but he sent a video. Klimadao, REN Protocol, F2 Pool, and, and Creole, and then Vega, uh, like the energy markets. And so, um, this is, yeah, so you can kind of see it, but there's like this system that you can, and I'll briefly talk about it. Basically, you can have, we, an incentivization flywheel where if carbon credits are the end goal of what we want people to purchase, we want that also, the purchasing of carbon credits to be uh, profitable, right? You can't just be burning a hole in your pocket um, from purchasing these carbon credits. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. So, for example, if you look at the, the very top, uh, can you scroll up, zoom out also? Uh, at the very top, yes, there's, right, this is an example, right? You have mining pools where the crypto assets are mined. They can be sent to Ethereum, or if they're already Ethereum-based, you can have a wrapping entity that wraps these crypto assets, um, like how REN, REN Protocol does, who is also part of the Blockchain Infrastructure Carbon Offset Working Group. And they can create, like, these wrapped assets, like you have wrapped Bitcoin on, on Ethereum. And then you can basically green them. So you can basically pair each of these wrapped assets with um, carbon credits that have been tokenized and brought on chain um, and that do benefit from the whole provenance and history and, 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 and non-reusability once you redeem them uh, or, or retire in them. And then you can create these basically green assets, right? So you have a wrapped, green, wrapped Bitcoin. It goes into something what we had termed like a green packaging entity. And then it, in goes Bitcoin, in goes a car tokenized carbon credit. You get like a, a green Bitcoin that comes out and then it can go off and, 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 and benefit from what we're all very familiar with in DeFi, the yield generation techniques that we have with lending and borrowing platforms, even uh, uh, st st stable, stable uh, uh, marketplaces. And that yield, and then you have like these assets that are potentially highly collateralizable because people value them. And wherever they do end up, they will return that type of 
that, that type of yield. And so you have this flywheel of eventually people are wanting to purchase and create these greened assets because there's yield that is at the end of the rainbow for them, right? And then, and then you can uh, continue to basically keep sucking up more and more carbon credits that is good for the environment, and then the more and more money that is going to, use, going to be used to purchase carbon credits is gonna continue to fund these, the projects that are creating these carbon credits on the ground that have been historically underfunded. And so there, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, like the tracking dashboards of how you track these assets, the type of carbon credits that need to be brought on chain, which type of registries need to be, go be going there, the curation that needs to happen, the carbon credit tokenization entities that are bringing traditional carbon credits and tokenizing them, and then the green packaging entity where it's literally a smart contract that is able to both retire these carbon credits and then package them up uh, into green assets and then, and then have, them, have them there. A little bit more depth into these green packaging entities is the, the ability to also, right, once it's wrapped, you can unwrap it. You can bring it back on. And so there, there's, there's uh, two, two mechanisms that we can, that we can talk about. But. That is basically, right, the incentivization of good behavior where we define good behavior as par purchasing carbon credits. How we can get um, um, other miners, for example, on the POW side to just switch to renewables, that, that is also part of it, but it has to be complementary. Switch to renewables as much as you can and offset the rest. And what's actually interesting about what green, green, greened assets is that instead of, you don't even need to go gr green carbon neutral, where carbon neutral basically means that you're offsetting your emissions. You can even go somewhere called go carbon negative, where then you are not just offsetting yourself and, and being at zero, but you're offsetting others. And so there, there, you can basically see this as a pendulum that sw swung from carbon, the, the cryptocurrency ecosystem has been like destroying the planet to if we can incentivize carbon negative activity, then cryptocurrency can essentially save the planet. It's a complete 180 80 switch. And, and that's where we get into like the, right, the crypto degens, right? And, and I use an example of like KlimaDAO. They literally raised $18 million in the matter of two days and is exclusively going to be purchasing carbon credits. And that was degen money. And, and they're, they're going and, and, and doing something good and then we're gonna be using that type of tokenized carbon credits that they're bringing on as, as one of the carbon credit tokenization entities. But yeah, there is an incentivization flywheel and you have like this whole crypto economic system that does enable this. Um, so yeah, that, that is uh, most of it. This is a very high level diagram, I, I agree. But yeah, we can have questions at the end and um, that's basically it. And I will, we will start bringing in uh, some of the, the Lego pieces that are gonna be right different parts. There's a CCTE here. There's NFT curation vaults here. Those are tracking dashboards and the wrapping entities. So uh, that's about it. I think that's the last, last slide. Let's see. Yeah, that's the last slide. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if anyone has, we can do questions at the end also, but if anyone has some quick questions, we will get uh, Mike from Fungi Proof up next. <laughs>